Welcome to Lecture 10, where we will continue our discussion of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, uh, but the difference now will be that we will look at uh, uh, matrices larger than simply two by two matrices. So, um, and you'll see that um, this really, the, the concept is the same, but it makes uh, the determination of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors just a bit more involved. So, let's look at uh, problem 8.1, uh, point 12. We want to find all the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the following matrix 3, 5, 3, 0, 4, 6, 0, 0, 1. And so, as usual, we set the determinant of A, we can call this A, and we set the determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero. So we get 3 minus lambda, 5, 3, 0, 4 minus lambda, 6, 0, 0, 1 minus lambda is equal to 0. Now in this case it's pretty easy for us to evaluate this 3 by 3 determinant. Uh, we should evaluate it either going down the first column or across the last row <coughs> because in both of those cases the, f the first column has two zeros in it the last row has two zeros in it, so if we choose either one of those ways of evaluating this, uh, we'll save ourselves a lot of work. So I'll, I'll go across the bottom row. And remember the checkerboard pattern associated with the determinant is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So uh, we will have plus 1 minus lambda times the determinant of what is left over when we take away the row and the column in which that 1 minus lambda appears. So we take away the final row and the final column. And we're left with 3 minus lambda, 5, 0, 4 minus lambda. And uh, this is equal to 0. And uh, then to do the 2 by 2 determinant here is very easy. That is simply 3 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus 0 times 5. And therefore we end up with 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda is equal to 0 and therefore uh, this matrix has three distinct eigenvalues lambda equals 1 3 or 4 and therefore since all the eigenvalues are different we are guaranteed that this matrix will have a full set of eigenvectors. That is, it will have three linearly independent eigenvectors. So, uh, following what we did in our last example, we will call this first eigenvalue of 1, we'll call that lambda 1. We'll call the second eigenvalue lambda 2. And the third eigenvalue we will call lambda 3. And so we want to find the associated eigenvectors. So let's, um, so we'll call those V1, V2, and V3. And uh, let's see what those eigenvectors are. 
Okay, to find V1, we go back to the defining equation, which is AV1 equals lambda 1 V1. And so, uh, remind ourselves of A, 353 zero four six zero zero one times x y z those will be the components for v1 and that's equal to lambda one which is one times v1 which again is x y z so when we multiply out on both sides of this equation, we get 3x plus 5y plus 3z, 4y plus 6z, and z on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we simply get x, y, z. So we get the three equations, 3x plus 5y plus 3z is equal to x, 4y plus 6z is equal to y, and z is equal to z. And you can see now, this, the, this set of equations is a little bit more complicated than the set of equations we would uh, typically get in a two by four two by two matrix and so that's why we want to look at this make sure everything is clear for um, this higher dimensional case so um, what we can do here uh, first of all let's go ahead and get uh, the, the last equation doesn't tell us much at all because it simply says that z is equal to z but the uh, next to last equation uh, 4y plus 6z is equal to y. If we take, uh, uh, if we add negative 4y to both sides of this equation, it will give us 6z is equal to negative 3y, which is the same thing as saying y is equal to negative 2z. And then if we take that result, y equals negative 2z, and plug it into the first equation, we will get 3x, let's go ahead and simplify that equation first by taking x over to the left hand side. So we get 2x plus 5y plus 3z is equal to 0. Now that's simply the result of taking um, the x that's on the right hand side over to the left hand side. And now we will uh, combine that and our result from down here that y is equal to negative 2z to get 2x minus 10z that's from plugging in negative 2z into this 5y term plus 3z is equal to 0 and that implies that x is equal to 7z over 2. So we have x equals 7z over 2, at y equals negative 2z, and z is equal to z. So everything now is in terms of z. And in order to avoid fractions, what I'll do is I'll choose z equals 2. And therefore, if I choose z is equal to 2, then x must be equal to 7, and y must be equal to negative 4. So this is an acceptable answer for v1. Now, any non-zero multiple of that vector is also an acceptable answer. Uh, but this is a, a an easy choice, so I'll stick with this. And as we've been doing before, let's check this and make sure it looks correct. So we have 3, 
five three zero four six zero zero one times seven negative four two and let's see what this will give us three times seven is twenty one minus twenty is one plus six is seven four times negative four is negative sixteen and twelve is negative four and finally one times two is two and sure enough, that's equal to 1 times 7, negative 4, 2. So this checks out that, uh, notice the vector, the, excuse me, the matrix times this vector that we've determined is equal to 1 times that vector. So that means that this vector is indeed an eigenvector of the matrix and that the associated eigenvalue is equal to 1. So this is an acceptable answer for V1. Now if you have not already uh, tried this problem on your own I hope that you will stop the video at this point and try to find V2 and V3 on your own. Okay now let's uh, let's look at V2. I don't know that we need to do all of these but let's at least do one more example here uh, V2 and see what we get. So again, uh, the way that we will find V2 is by going back to the definition. A V2 is equal to lambda 2 V2. And so that is 353, 3, 0, 0, 1. And now we let V2 equal X, Y, Z. And uh, remember that lambda 2, we found that lambda 2 was equal to 3. <clears throat> so now, as we've done uh, before, let's um, multiply out on each side. So we get 3X plus 5y plus 3z is equal to 3x 4y plus 6z is equal to 3y and z is equal to 3z okay now uh, notice that this last equation is helpful to us this time in the previous case this equation z equals z was not very helpful, but the last one now, in this case, is helpful because this tells us immediately if z is equal to 3z, then z must be equal to 0. So this means then, if, um, well, let's go ahead, let's, let's simplify the first two equations. Um, notice that the first equation becomes 5y plus 3z is equal to 0. We get that by adding negative 3x to both sides. And uh, the second equation is uh, if we take a, a negative 4y to both sides and then do a little bit of algebra, we get um, uh, y is equal to negative 6z. Now, if we combine the last two equations, we get y equals 0. And that would also be um, our result if we combine the first equation and the third equation. So we're, we are concluding here that y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0. But there is no constraint on x. And therefore, the appropriate eigenvector uh, is any non-zero multiple of one zero zero and I'll just choose one zero zero we have to have y equals zero we have to have z equals zero but x can be anything uh, and of course we don't want it to be zero because we never want to zero uh, the zero vector 
uh, that is, we never want the vector to dissolve zeros. We never want to consider that as an eigenvector. So we'll choose one zero zero. And um, this one, well, I'll go ahead and check it, but it's almost one you can check in your head. Check three five three zero four six zero zero one times one zero zero is equal to three zero zero which indeed is equal to three times one zero zero so that shows that one zero zero is indeed an eigenvector of this matrix and that the associated eigenvalue is three so now let's do one last uh, challenging case like this and uh, then we will um, be done with this topic, uh, at least the topic of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Then uh, we will begin to talk about uh, some applications of them in our next lecture. So uh, the last example we'll do is 8.1.16. And our, our matrix A in this case is the following negative 3, 0, 4, 2, 0, 1, negative 2, 4, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2. And 0, 2, negative 2, 3. So we'll go ahead now and um, uh, set the determinant of A minus lambda I equal to 0. So we get minus 3 minus lambda, 0, 4, 2. 0, 1 minus lambda, negative 2, 4. 2, 4, negative 1 minus lambda, negative 2. 0, 2, negative 2, 3 minus lambda. And that is equal to 0. Now, uh, we need to figure out how to evaluate this determinant and if it were me um, what I would do is make the observation that <clears throat> we have two zeros in the first column so that suggests to me that we should go down the first column um, in evaluating this determinant so we will get minus 3 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda negative 2 4 4 minus 1 minus lambda minus 2 2 negative 2 3 minus lambda okay that's um, uh, what we get from this term and then we we don't want to forget this so we'll say plus 2 times uh, 0, 1 minus lambda, 2, 4, negative 2, negative 2, 2, 4, 3 minus lambda is equal to 0. Okay. So I, I have checked that, and uh, I believe that it is correct. And uh, so now let's proceed with this. Um, we now need to evaluate this 3 by 3 determinant. And uh, I don't see really any great way to do this to save much time. So I'll just go ahead and expand down the uh, first column. So I get minus 3 minus lambda. times 1 minus lambda times minus 1 minus lambda minus 2 minus 2 
3 minus lambda. Then minus 4, remember that minus sign is coming in from the checkerboard pattern, so we get minus 4 here, times negative 2, 4, negative 2, 3 minus lambda, and then plus 2, times negative 2, 4, minus 1 minus lambda, minus 2. Okay, let's just check real quickly. Okay, I believe all that is correct. And now we need to uh, include this second term. So we have plus 2. And um, let's evaluate across the first row since we have a zero in the first row. So uh, when we do that, uh, the first term is this four. Remember the checkerboard pattern, so it becomes minus four. So minus four times one minus lambda four, two, three minus lambda. plus 2 times 1 minus lambda minus 2, 2, negative 2 and that is equal to 0. So now let's uh, go to the next line minus 3 minus lambda times uh, 1 minus lambda times negative 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus a negative 2 times negative 2, so minus 4. minus 4 times negative 2 times 3 minus lambda minus a negative 2 times 4 so plus 8 and then plus 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 minus uh, negative 1 times negative uh, negative 1 minus lambda times 4 And then let's uh, remember the second line here. So we have plus 2 times uh, negative 4 times 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 8 plus 2 times negative 2 times 1 minus lambda plus 4 equals 0. And we're getting there. Uh, minus 3 minus lambda. And now let's uh, multiply out what we have here inside this bracket. We get 1 minus lambda times, okay, we're going to get uh, lambda squared. And then we get a negative 1 times negative lambda, so that's plus lambda minus 3 lambda, so that's minus 2 lambda. 
and then we get a negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and negative 4 is negative 7. Okay, and now then minus 4 times, uh, this will give us 2 lambda, and then minus 6 plus 8 is plus 2, plus 2 times a negative of a negative lambda is lambda, negative of negative 1 is positive, oops, we have this 4 multiplying out here and I forgot about that, so uh, we need to be careful, that should be f not lambda but 4 lambda, 4 lambda, and then plus 4 plus 4 is plus 8. And then plus 2 times uh, negative 4. And then we'll get lambda squared. And uh, minus lambda and minus 3 lambda is minus 4 lambda. And then 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 8 is negative 5 plus 2 times 2 lambda minus 2 and plus 4 is plus 2 and that's equal to 0 so minus 3 minus lambda times uh, minus lambda cubed minus 2 lambda squared plus 7 lambda plus lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 7 minus 8 lambda minus 8 plus 8 lambda plus 16 plus 2 times minus 4 lambda squared plus 16 lambda plus 20 plus 4 lambda plus 4 equals 0. And before I go any further, let me stop for a moment and check this work. Uh, so maybe we need to check it together because right away I found an error. Okay, here the minus 3 minus lambda, I brought that down. And then when I multiply this negative lambda times lambda squared, that's how I get negative lambda cubed. But then negative lambda times negative 2 lambda should have been plus 2 lambda squared here. Negative lambda times 7 is the 7 lambda. And then 1 times this will give us lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 7. So that all looks correct. Minus 4 times 2 lambda is minus 8 lambda. Minus 4 times 2 is negative 8. 2 times 4 lambda is 8 lambda. 2 times 8 is 16. So I believe that that's correct. And now uh, in here we have 2 and then negative 4 lambda squared plus 16 lambda plus 20 plus 4 lambda plus 4 is equal to 0. So I believe that this is all correct. And... Um, now let's uh, group terms together. Uh, we get minus 3 minus lambda and then inside the parentheses minus lambda cubed and now when we group 2 lambda squared and lambda squared we get plus 3 lambda squared and um, I'll put marks under terms once we've taken care of them so we take care of all that and now 7 lambda minus 2 lambda is 5 lambda and notice that the minus 8 lambda and positive 8 lambda those go away so we're, again we're left with 7 lambda minus 2 lambda is 5 lambda so plus 5 lambda and that takes care 
of those two terms. And now we only have left minus 7 and minus 8, so that's minus 15. And then the rest of it becomes 2 times minus 4 lambda squared. And then plus 20 lambda. Plus 24. Equals 0. And now uh, let's multiply out and uh, group everything together and see what we can do. So uh, we will get... 3 lambda cubed minus 9 lambda squared minus 15 lambda plus 45 plus lambda to the fourth minus 3 lambda cubed minus 15, excuse me, uh, minus 5 lambda squared. plus 15 lambda now that's what I'm getting all from these uh, multiplying these two terms together and then uh, let's multiply 2 times this term and we get minus 8 lambda squared plus 40 lambda plus 48 equals 0. And so now let's group terms together and see what we can do. Lambda to the fourth and then for lambda to the cubed uh, we just have minus 3 lambda cubed And for the lambda squared terms, we have uh, minus 9 and 3. So that's minus 6. And minus 5 is minus 11. Minus 19. Minus 19 lambda squared. That's uh, 3 minus 9 is negative 6. And negative 5 makes negative 11. And negative 8 makes negative 19. So that's those terms. And now for the lambda terms, we have uh, notice that the minus 15 lambda and 15 lambda will cancel. And the only other lambda term we have is this plus 40 lambda. And then after that, all we have left are the um, 45 plus 48. So that's plus 93 is equal to zero. So if we have not made any errors, this is the characteristic equation for this matrix. And now what we want to do is to think about this and see if we can find any uh, find uh, the four values of lambda that will uh, satisfy this equation. And uh, if we just start uh, trying a few values, if you try lambda equals 1, you can see 1 minus 3 is negative 2, minus 19 is negative 21, negative 21 and 40 would be 19 plus 93. That's certainly not equal to 0. So 1 won't work. What about uh, 2? Let's see. We would get 16 here. So if we try 2, try lambda equals 2, and we would get 16 minus 3 times 8 would be minus 24 minus 19 times 4 would be minus 76 plus 2 times 40 would be plus 80 plus 93 and that's not going to work so uh, rather than bore you with all the details let me stop the video now and I'll try my own as you should as uh, yourself and we'll try to find out some roots here okay I've discovered here that uh, just a little bit before the end there was an error and let me point out to you where it is in multiplying out this term minus 3 minus lambda times this term in, in brackets everything here is correct except uh, when we looked at the constant term minus 7 minus 8 I put minus 15 
but I forgot about this 16. So we have minus 15 plus 16. So this negative 15, instead of negative 15, there we should have a plus 1. Plus 1. So now let's... Um, Let's see what that would change. <clears throat> so we don't have to redo much work at all, just, just from this point on. So uh, when we multiply out, then uh, we will get um, let's see. Well, this very first term is incorrect here. This should be a 3 lambda cubed. Because that's minus 3 times minus lambda cubed. So that should be 3 lambda cubed minus 9 lambda squared minus 15 lambda. And then minus 3 here minus 3 and then negative lambda times negative lambda cubed will be plus lambda to the fourth that's correct negative lambda times 3 lambda squared is minus 3 lambda cubed that's correct minus lambda times 5 lambda uh, now will be uh, minus 5 lambda squared which is correct here and now since we've changed this to 1, instead of getting uh, 15 lambda, we will get a minus lambda. So this should be minus lambda. And then mi minus 8 lambda squared plus 40 lambda plus 48. And now... Uh, of course, we haven't canceled anything out, so we need to get rid of all these marks that indicate we have, because we have not now. And uh, I'll stop at this point one more time, make sure this is correct, because we're just about done. So now I believe we have this all straight. Um, indeed, everything here... Uh, that we calculated just a moment ago is indeed correct and then if you uh, multiply all this out you get these terms here and uh, notice that the 3 lambda cubed and the negative 3 lambda cubed will cancel so you don't have any lambda cubed terms but you do have this lambda to the fourth which we can bring down here and then if you combine the lambda squared terms, you have minus 9 lambda squared, minus 5 lambda squared, minus 8 lambda squared. So that gives you the minus 22 lambda squared. And then for the lambda terms, you have a minus 15 lambda and a minus 8 lambda. So that's minus 16 lambda plus 40 lambda. It gives you 24 lambda. And then finally, for the constant terms, minus 3 and 48 is 45. So there was just that one error in our calculation, but you can see it threw everything off. And so that's why, obviously, you need to be careful. So this is the correct characteristic equation for uh, this matrix. And now we can start, uh, as we did before, uh, to try some values. And I'll admit that I have... Uh, uh, looked uh, ahead so I know what will work and I might as well help you we might as well get uh, to that right away so let's try um, w w let's try first um, try lambda equals negative one and if we try this then we would have negative one to the fourth power that's one minus 22 times negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 24 plus 45. And we ask, is that equal to 0? And of course, the answer is actually yes. So, uh, lambda equals negative 1 is indeed an eigenvalue.
Now, this helps us to find the others in the following way. This means that lambda minus negative 1 is a factor of lambda to the fourth minus 22 lambda squared plus 24 lambda plus 45. And uh, we can find out more about that by simply doing what's called synthetic substitution. So, or synthetic division, excuse me. So we have lambda plus 1, and we're going to divide that into lambda to the 4th minus 22 lambda squared plus 24 lambda plus 45. And so... We have lambda cubed times lambda plus 1 will give us lambda to the 4th plus lambda cubed. And now change the sign of that and add. When we change the sign to uh, negative lambda to the 4th, that will cancel with the lambda to the 4th above. And uh, we'll get minus lambda cubed, because there's no lambda cubed term above, minus 22 lambda squared plus 24 lambda plus 45. Now we'll say minus lambda squared and minus lambda squared times lambda will be minus lambda cubed minus lambda squared times 1 is minus lambda squared. Again change the sign and add and we will get minus 21 lambda squared plus 24 lambda plus 45 and now we'll have minus 21 lambda. Minus 21 lambda times lambda is minus 21 lambda squared. Minus 21 lambda times 1 is minus 21 lambda. Change the sign and add, and we get 45 lambda plus 45. And so finally up here we have 45, and that will give us 45 lambda plus 45. And sure enough, as we expected, that turns out to be zero. So this tells us that our original characteristic polynomial, lambda to the fourth minus 22 lambda squared plus 24 lambda plus 45, is equal to lambda plus 1 times lambda cubed minus lambda squared minus 21 lambda plus 45. And th th that's a big help because instead of trying to look for, look for the roots of a fourth degree polynomial, now we look for, are looking for the roots of a third degree polynomial. And so that is a big help. And uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, you could, you could continue in this fashion, and what you will find is this. Lambda, uh, the acceptable values for lambda are negative 1, which we've already found. And then we have a repeated root of 3. And then finally, we have negative 5. So those are the four eigenvalues for this matrix, negative 1, 3, 3, and negative 5. And since we have a repeated eigenvalue, uh, we may have, um, you know, we're, we're definitely going to have an eigenvector associated with negative 1. We're definitely going to have an eigenvector associated with negative 5. But we don't know if we'll have one or two eigenvectors associated with that 3. So let's go ahead. I won't uh, calculate the eigenvectors associated with negative 1 and negative 5. That's pretty straightforward. It's just what we've done before. But let's look at the eigenvectors associated with 3 and see if there's one or two of them. And that will finish uh, this lecture. So we'll say find the eigenvector, and I'll put in parentheses an S because we don't know if it's plural or not associated with lambda equals 3 and so we do this in the usual way uh, A V is equal to lambda V 
So we have negative 3, 0, 4, 2, 0, 1, negative 2, 4, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 2, negative 2, 3. times w, x, y, z is equal to 3 times w, x, y, z. And let's see what this will give us. So we get minus 3w plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 3w x minus 2y plus 4z is equal to 3x two w plus 4x minus y minus 2z is equal to 3y and finally, 2x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 3z. In each case, I'll take what's on the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. So the first equation becomes minus 6w plus 4y plus to z equals zero. The second equation will become minus 2x minus 2y plus 4z equals zero. The third equation, when we take the 3y over to the left hand side, will give us 2w plus 4x minus 4y minus 2z equals zero. And the final equation, when we take 3z over to the left-hand side, or negative, or add negative 3z to each side, we get 2x minus 2y is equal to 0. Now, obviously, the simplest of these equations is that last one. It implies that y is equal to x. So let's substitute that um, into the... Um, second equation so we're going to take y equals x and we're going to substitute that into the second equation and see what that gives us so we will the second equation will then become minus 2x minus 2x because we're substituting y equals x plus 4z equals 0 and this says minus 4x plus 4z equals 0 which, of course, implies that z is equal to x. So now we have y is equal to x and z is equal to x. And let's plug both of those results into the first equation. We get minus 6w plus 4x plus 2x is equal to 0. Therefore, minus 6w plus 6x equals 0. And w is equal to x. So we have y is equal to x, w is equal to x, and z is equal to x. And therefore, all these uh, are equal to each other. And so the uh, eigenvector in this case would be uh, or any non-zero multiple of 1, 1, 1, 1. And to complete this, let's just check that to make sure it works out. So we have, uh, so we'll say check negative 3, 0, 4, 2, 0, 1, negative 2, 4, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 2, negative 
two, three. Uh, yes, three. Times one, 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 one. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, the uh, this will give us three. And then uh, three. And let's see, two and four is six. Minus one is five. Minus two is three. And two minus two is zero. Plus three is three. Which, sure enough, is equal to three times one, 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 one. So that proves that 1, 1, 1, 1 is indeed an eigenvector of this matrix and that the associated eigenvalue is 3. And notice that uh, we only are coming up here with one eigenvector for this repeated eigenvalue. Remember, 3 is re a repeated eigenvalue. It, uh, it is repeated. Uh, um, it, is, it has a multiplicity of 2, and yet we only have one associated eigenvector. And therefore... Uh, this matrix does not have a full set of eigenvectors. It will have three linearly independent eigenvectors, uh, not four. So that's the way that we would do, we would find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in a higher dimensional case, and you can see that it can certainly become quite unwieldy. I think that most people would feel like you could do maybe the 3x3 three three case by hand, but anything larger than that, you would go to the computer. Uh, and uh, a program like MATLAB can handle this very quickly. So that concludes um, the lecture part of uh, Lecture 10, and now we will look at some problems, and uh, we will be done with all of our introduction to eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Then we'll look at some applications in our next lecture. So the problems that we will do for this lecture 10 are as follows. Uh, problem 10.1 will be problem 8.1.11 from your book. And you are given there, that's a 3 by 3 case, so you're going to come up with a third degree uh, polynomial. And they're telling you that one of the roots of the characteristic equation is lambda equals 3. And so then if you'll do the synthetic division as we did uh, in the problem we just uh, determined, you'll be left after you... Um, you know, the the fact that one of the eigenvalues is lambda equals 3 means that you can take that characteristic polynomial that you get and write it as lambda minus 3 times a second degree polynomial. And once, of course, once you figure out what that second degree polynomial is, uh, you could use a quadratic formula to find the other two eigenvalues. And then uh, problem 10.2 will be problem 8.1.13 from your book and that one is another uh, 3 by 3 matrix but in this, in this case uh, the uh, book does not give you a hint about uh, the identity of any of the eigenvalues so you'll need to um, you'll need to do a little bit of guessing for that one but that uh, those are the problems for lecture 10 and that uh, then concludes lecture 10 and good luck